Hello beautiful people of the world and welcome to a new PD tutorial. In the last video we learned how to use the line object to read an audio file from an array. In this video we're going to learn how to use another object to read the content of an array and this object is the facer object. But in the last video we used an audio file as the content of an array. In this video we're going to do something really cool which is that we're going to use an array as a sound oscillator with the classic sound synthesis waveforms. So this is going to be a bit nerdy so brace yourself and let's get started. So the first thing that we want to do is to create a new array. So let's go to the put menu and choose array or we can learn the shortcut shift command a or shift control a for windows and linux and in the properties we're going to choose a name so let's say waveforms and we need this time to set the size so we can choose anything that is a power of two like 512 or what 1024 i'm going to choose 2048 And we can click on Polygon and OK. So this is going to be our oscillator with several waveforms. And I already created the tab read for object and it has already the creation argument with the right name for the array we want to read from. So it's waveforms. So now we need to put some content into the array and we need to put into it waveforms. So how do we do this? Well, we use commands. We can use message boxes in PD to send specific commands to a specific object. So let's create a new message box. And we need to put a semicolon into it to say to PD, this is a command. And the first thing that we want to write is the destination of this command. So in this case, it's the waveforms array. So we write waveforms, which is the name of the array. So it means what follows is going to be addressed to this object here. Okay, next we need to write the command that we want to use. And we're going to use the sinsum, I hope I pronounce it right, command. And basically what this means is that it's going to make a sum of sine waves and we're going to fill the array with the result of the sum. So basically this is additive synthesis. Okay, so now we have to write the number of points our array is composed of, is made of. So in my case, it's 2048. Okay, so now the fun part. Now we have to write the values, the amplitude values for each partial that we want the resulting waveform to be made of. So if I just write one, this is the amplitude and I remind you that this value must be between 0 and 1. And if I just put one value for one partial, I'm going to have a sine wave because basically I'm summing, well, just one waveform. So if I now switch to performance mode and I click on this command, I am basically filling the waveforms array with amplitude values. So each point, each element of the array is an amplitude value. And basically, since this is additive synthesis, but with only one partial, I'm going to have, well, the one partial that I put into it. So a sine wave. Okay, so before we go on and try to make more complex waveforms, let's learn how to read the content of the array to make it as an oscillator. Now, well, an oscillator is something that creates a continuous waveform. So we have to read the content of the array from the first point, from the first element to the last one. And then we have to go back and start over again and again in a cyclic way. So to do this, we use the phaser object. So let's create a new object. And, oops, phaser. 
Okay, and what this is, is basically an oscillator. Not really an oscillator because it goes from zero to one and then it starts over. So this is not to be used as a sound source. This is a control object that generates values at sample rate speed. So this is a control object, actually, not really an oscillator. It's a ramp generator, okay? But it behaves like an oscillator because it creates a ramp. It goes from zero to one continuously. Okay, so we have to use a frequency value for it. So let's say... Okay, these are hertz. So this is a frequency value, okay? Okay, so now we know that we can send indexes values to the tab read objects to read the content of, of an array. So we have 2048 values here. But the phaser object goes from zero to one. So we have to scale these values to be suitable to the 2048 values. So we have to multiply these values by 2048. So basically, when the phaser starts from zero, zero times 2048 is zero. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be reading the first value, the first element in the array. And when the phaser reaches one, one times 2048, it's the last value. So it's gonna be reading the values of the array now. So we can hook up this to the tab read object. So if we raise the volume, we can now hear a sine waveform. Pretty neat, hey? Okay, now this is clicking because I don't, I'm not using the line object to smooth these values. So I can just fix this very quickly. Much better now. Okay, if I change the frequency here, I basically have an oscillator. Okay, so now how do we change the waveform? How do we make this waveform a different one, uh, a new one, a more interesting one? Well, first of all, let's copy this message so that we have our waveform, our sine wave here. This is like a preset. And we can just add more amplitude values here. Okay, so let's see what happens here. Okay, so now we, we can see that the resulting waveforms of the sum, the additive synthesis of several amplitude values, and every value is one. Basically, we are summing one plus one plus one plus one and so on. So now you see why you should always keep your amplitude values between 0 and 1, because basically we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 instead of 1. So the maximum amplitude value is not 1 anymore, but it's 8. This is, gonna, you know, it, it, this is very bad. Okay, so how do we fix this? Well, we use another command, so we can just write another semicolon. And the new command is going to be a normalization command. So first of all, we have to type the destination object for this command. So again, the waveforms array. So waveforms. And then we're going to normalize to 1. Because 1 is the maximum amplitude value that we are allowed to use. So if I click now on this, as you can see, the resulting waveform, it has been brought back to the 0, 1 range. So, but this is a very random uh, waveform. It's interesting.
well, a bit interesting. But with additive synthesis, you can set specific amplitude values to have the classic waveforms of subtractive synthesis, for instance. Now, I already have my presets in another patch. So I have an array here. And to make the square wave, I use this set of values. And these are 16 partials, but I also have the 32 partials version, which is more square-ish, so to speak. And of course, all of the classic waveforms with 16 partials and 32 partials as well. So the interesting part here is that you can use this command to create the, the waveforms that you like. So this is it. I hope this is useful and fun. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.